Now, Prince Mangosuthi Botelezi led the IFP when rival leaders were engaged in Codesa negotiations in the early 1990s. It's those negotiations that were followed by political violence in some Gauteng townships. Now, hundreds were killed as ANC and IFP members brutally locked horns. Almost three decades later, we reflect on the legacy of these townships. Zeniko Mshaba is in Togoza for us this afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Zeniko. How are the people there reflecting on that violence that was experienced in the 80s and the early 90s and also on the legacy uh, of Prince Mangosu Tivotelezi? Well, um, Nick Clement will be engaging with different um, citizens of this particular township, Tokoza, famously known for those violent um, the clashes between uh, Amazulu and Amakos, and then later between ANC and IFP. So you remember that um, the, the center of that battle was here at Kumalo Street in Tokoza, not far from another area which was also a battleground between those two sides, which was called the Polar Park, or which is called Polar Park currently. Um, it was used to be an informal settlement at the time, but now it has turned into a proper township as uh, RTB houses have been built. So we are here actually at that infamous Kumano Street in Togoza. Actually, I'm just under the shelter of um, Togoza Memorial, where uh, it's more like a, a, a monument that recognizes and, and, and knows the contribution of all the victims who lost their lives during those battles. And actually, I'm just going to step out of shot just to give you um, a, a broader sense. So what you see there is the name at the names of all those people but I understand from the people who are actually working in this particular site that these are just few names. Most of the names are not here and most of the people who are actually um, noted down on this monument are people who are residing here in Togoza. Um, this site actually was opened by the former president of the country and former president of the ANC Mr. Tabombege alongside the former minister of home affairs who happened to be the IFP leader or Prince I'm just going to read the top line of that particular moment, um, um, of this monument. It's written, Togoza Memorial, uh, and goes as, as this. This memorial has been officially unveiled by the President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Tabombegi, President of the ANC, and the Minister of Home Affairs, Prime uh, Prince Mangosu Tobutelezi, and of course, missing during the political conflict that engulfed Togoza and surrounding areas before and after the first democratic elections in 1994. And if you can see now the list of all the names, and um, just want to look at the actual number of the people. So, the actual number of the people are written here is about 688. So that talks to uh, a fraction of people lost their lives here. Yeah, but I'm going to bring in here oh, Mr. Nzipo, who was an activist at the time, who's going to give us an overview and, 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 and the importance of Tokoza, especially when we are reflecting on the legacy of one of the key leaders at the time. But what we also need to emphasize was that it was not just the IFP attacking the ANC, it was also the ANC members attacking the IFP themselves. So I'm going to bring him in, Dadebunga Sondela, um, for me. Uh, this is a very, very important side for you as a former activist who's still alive, who an activist at the time. But as we are remembering Umdona Gapindange, the reflections also have to link to the role he played in terms of quelling tensions here. Uh, but there are those who are saying that this was a battle between the ANC and the AFP. As a young person of that time and an activist and a senior citizen right now, how strategic, how important is it for the people of Togoza to reflect objectively, objectively on the legacy of the late prince? Let me put it this way. I think uh, we have been let down by leaders. Leaders in government, they should have, you know, and heeded long time to this reconciliation between the IFP and the ANC so that the past you know, era, terrible era of violence. We as communities were affected and directly, you know, and lost uh, families, friends, community, you know, uh, activists, young people that died here. We can close the chapter. Mm -hmm. It is very unfortunate that, you know, and that process, uh, it's still, you know, and uh, in discussions. It's not at the implementation phase. 
where, you know, and uh, we need to write off this process where I think, you know, both leaders in the Afghan National Congress and the IFP are supposed to uh, expedite a process where I think we focus on development of this community, mm -hmm. bring back the lives of the people back because many people lost, you know, properties. Their houses, you know, were invaded by people who are not the rightful owners and they're still, you know, and they're occupied by those, you know, and the people who are illegally occupying those houses. So talk to me about the, your personal experience. Earlier on of camera, you showed me the name of your brother, Hosea, uh, in this particular monument. Yeah. Um, how has that delay you just mentioned affected or delayed your, your closure? Have you found closure as, uh, closure as you lost your brother here, who happens to be um, written this monument today, almost three decades later? Well, it is unfortunate, as I said it earlier on to you, that and, uh, it is the government that's supposed to uh, make it uh, possible that uh, the reconciliation is expedited. The municipality of Ekuruleni should have assisted and focused in creating jobs opportunities, deals with uh, the poverty eradication in this area. These are the problems that are scars of the violence that we are talking about. It is real to them because they lost parents and we lost brothers. My brother perished during that era, Anele, you know, and Nzipo Kalipa, who was also an activist, a young person at the time, when he lost many of the people, my neighbors, and uh, who were, you know, staying with us. But one of them, of course, was a, a person I grew up with, Dr. Shabangu, who also perished during that, you know, violence. Many of them were at the crossfire of the fight. Okay. Can, can, can you tell us more about Anel and, and just as, we, as you point me to his name here, um, what kind of person was he? So this is him, this is Mr. Anel Nzipo, who is the brother to Mr. Nzipo, whom I'm talking to. Talk to us about him. How was he and how did his death affect the family? It affected us, it affected his career. He was a soccer star who, and at the time, uh, he was already, you know, and going through the trials with, you know, Orlando Pirates. We were looking upon him to become one of the professional, you know, soccer. We lost him, and uh, we, we are still not knowing how he was buried, because the last time, you know, I investigated, he died in prison at, you know, at Sun City. We did not know. They were unable to conduct us. He was, you know, and uh, buried as a pauper's first a person until I conducted further investigation, I discovered that he was buried at West Park in Johannesburg. Up to today, no one in government has taken accountability about this thing. I try, you know, to talk to then the former General Secretary of the South African Communist Party, who was the Minister of uh, Police at the time, uh, Minister, you know, Charles Magule, to say, how do we then ensure that such people, you know, and we close the chapter? We have not buried my brother. Mm -hmm. As a family, you know, and we're still having those wounds that, you know, we never buried him. We don't know how he died. All what we know, his cousin is the one who identified because they were in prison at uh, uh, Johannesburg Prison, which is called, you know, Sun City. Mm. How would you describe the relations now between the two groupings? Because initially... Um, it was based on tribal lines, Amazulu, um, against Amakos for whatever reasons. And yeah. then it turned into a political battle between the IFP and the ANC. How are the relations now? How is the community? How are you relating to each other as members of the community post-1994? It is still difficult to reconcile because, you know, there is a level of low trust between ourselves and the people that, you know, and we grew up, we stayed with them for many, many, many years as household year. And this is something that I'm saying that the government, whether local government, whether, you know, provincial or national government, they should have taken initiative of the reconciliation process. We needed, you know, and this uh, monument to also improve on it so that you can attract tourists because it's historical, this issue of this violence. It's not an issue that, you know, we should sit down and say there was a violence. We should turn Togoza to become, you know, and like an area in uh, Soweto, where, you know, and uh, we can attract tourists and we can make economic activities. These young people who are unemployed are supposed to get, you know, opportunities so that this place is declared as a route or a liberation route for the purpose of tourism. So these are the things that are not happening. Mm. The reason is obviously 
we have, you know, deployed incorrectly people who are not interested in the well-being of citizens of this country. Okay, that uh, in the eastern, not just here in Togoza, you'll find sections that are called uh, in the house Abesutu, in the house Amazulu. I mean, how is that still a reality? Thirty years later, where you know that in this particular area, dominantly you'll find Amazulu speaking person, you'll find Abesutu speaking person. How have you, as community members, failed then to break those boundaries? The boundaries remain there because we still have Basutu, we still have Ferhano, we still have Kumla Banj. We are, you know, and placed along the tribal lines, which was promoted by the policies of the Fervut at the time. We are still, you know, having scars of, you know, the policies of the old government. We need to deal with issues seriously about transforming our communities to become, you know, and not segregated in the manner how, how it was. But we are failed by, you know, the councillors. We are failed by, you know, the leaders that we have placed there. We are failed by politicians who are supposed to take responsibility on developmental issues so that we developed our communities. We were able to compete with, you know, and suburbs and we are able to know that undeveloped, you know, townships, they need to focus. Budget should be redirected here. We have got sewage that is spilling over every day. This, you know, and the area which is, you see it here, Councillor has spent 86 million rands for nothing because the money that was supposed to develop this area, make it, you know, and a viable commercial activity for this area for tourists, that money, you know, and got lost because of we tend, you know, and to send people with no commitment to come and deal with developmental issues, uh, but we send people and deploy them into parliament, into and. Uh, local government into provincial government in the legislatures who are all about themselves they are not selfless leaders who are supposed to know that they must serve the most important thing the criteria that must be used to elect or to select people to go to parliament to go to the legislatures to go to the council it must be people with track record of serving the community who stays with those communities Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's Mr. Kalipa Nzipo, uh, giving us a brief history, a brief history, but also reflecting on the current state of this particular community. Talk also, as I said earlier on, that throughout this afternoon, we've been tracking um, those voices. We'll be tracking the victims. We'll be speaking to them just to get a sense of where they are psychologically, physically, but also economically, and how is this particular uh, community payment is 30 years later. So that's it for now. Um, we will move from this particular location and try to get into the actual community and engage with the residents. Zinitom Shaba, thank you. We'll touch base with you again later as you move around and reflect on such a painful, uh, really painful past in those townships.